Well, hey guys, welcome back. Cumberland Outdoorsman out here at my shooting range doing a little bit of plinking with an old 22, a plastic 22, that is, or at least plastic stocked. This is a J.C. Higgins model 101.16. And uh, this was actually made by Savage Arms back in the day, and it was marketed through J.C. Higgins by Sears and Roebuck. I'm not sure how many of these units were made back in the day, but I think they were discontinued in 1962, if I'm not mistaken. But the stocks were actually made out of a material that was similar to that of the famous Remington Nylon 66, which I have here on the table. And I've got several models here that I'm gonna be featuring in this video. So if you like these old 22s like I do, stay tuned because this is the video for you. Well guys, I'm gonna be doing a little bit more shooting with this J.C. Higgins Model 101 because I'm really curious about this gun. So far it seems like it's a very accurate 22 and a good shooting rifle. It's a little bit on the heavy side because of the solid receiver and the long barrel, but you know, nothing that you can't manage. And I actually like a, a little bit heavier gun personally, but uh, from what I can tell, this is a semi-automatic that can be fired semi-automatically but you can also lock the bolt in because it has a cross bolt locking system and you can fire it and then cycle it lock it back in and fire it in non semi-automatic mode and that's a really neat feature and uh, these are old guns they're no longer being made but uh, this one here came to me by way of a friend of a friend so to speak that needed some repair work done on it it was jammed up. It had some 22 short shells jammed up in the action, and I had to take the gun apart and get it unjammed. I cleaned it and everything and got it put back together and functioning properly. And also did a little bit of work on the stock. It was scratched up real badly. So I sanded it out, got it down to 2000 grit, and then I buffed it out and polished it. I also repaired the forehand here. It had a piece broken out of it, and I built up some epoxy there to get it smoothed back out. It's not the exact same color, but you know, it's a lot better than a missing piece right there. So I got the stock back in shape, in fairly presentable shape, I would say, and uh, got the gun shooting well again. But I'm gonna put up a target down here at 40 yards and we'll see how accurate the little rifle is and we'll shoot it both ways, semi-automatic and also with the bolt locked. But uh, like I said, this one here had a plastic stock that's what these came out with and as far as I can tell I believe I've seen some shotguns that had the same material made by uh, Savage and marketed through JC Higgins now these guns were superficially similar to the ever popular Remington nylon 66 and I've got one here on the table that I featured several months ago in a video that was dedicated to this rifle this is the nylon 66 it's a semi-automatic repeater, and uh, I believe the first models came out in 1959, and they were discontinued in 1988, I believe, where the last ones rolled off the assembly line from Remington. And then Remington sold the rights and the tooling of the Nylon 66 to a Brazilian company named CBC and uh, that stands for Compania Brasileira de Cartuchos or the Brazilian Cartridge Company and I've got one of those rifles right here this one came out with a black stock and black receiver these were virtual clones of the nylon 66 and were really good shooting rifles. They're not quite as refined as the Nylon 66, but as far as I know, I believe parts can actually be interchanged between these and the original Nylon 66 rifles. And they load exactly the same right here through the back of the stock. And we'll take this one and shoot it a little bit here at my 50 yard range. Had the same sights 
as a nylon 66 and like I said were virtual clones. They did not use the Zytel 101 nylon as the original nylon 66's did but uh, instead they used something called Technil which was very similar the same type of resin pretty much but uh, it has a little bit more of a plastic feel to it still has that diamond there in the forend and the checkering is not quite as aesthetically pleasing as the original nylon 66 checkering is but either way it's pretty much the same gun and you can still find these on online auctions occasionally you'll run across one at a pawn shop or at a gun show but the prices on these have gone up as well although they're not quite as high as the original nylon 66's now the nylon 66 was made at a time when Remington and DuPont partnered up in producing firearms. DuPont came up with this Zytel 101 nylon resin and uh, these guns from the front of the stock all the way to the butt were one piece. They were a one piece nylon stock and the receiver was actually made out of nylon. This metal piece right here is just a cover that goes over the top and uh, it has a scope mount. It came grooved with a scope mount and this one here I've put a Ted Williams scope on it that I recently got at a gun show because I wanted something that was pretty much period correct and it's already set for 22 rimfire ranges uh, with the parallax corrected and it's a really clear scope. It's got nice fine crosshairs and just adds to the rifle very nicely. Now Remington made several different models in the nylon line and I've got one here this is something that you don't see every day folks it's quite rare this one here came to me by way of a friend that owns a gun store that's Dave that owns uh, gun country here in Clarksville Tennessee Tennessee gun country and uh, this one here is in great shape this is almost like brand new it's a bolt action repeater nylon 11 here, I'll show you on the bottom. You can see right there. It's an original Remington Nylon 11. And like I say, these are quite rare. I've only seen a handful of these, and most of them were at gun shows uh, where people specialized in collecting these. They made a Remington Nylon 10, which was a single shot bolt action, just like the Remington Model 510 had the same bolt. They made a Remington Nylon 11 which I have here which is the same as the Model 511 which was a clip repeater has the same magazine as the 511 the same bolt same action and then they made a Nylon 12 which was the same as the Remington Model 512 which had a tubular magazine and I've got a Model 511 right here on the table. This one here has a walnut stock, of course. But it has the same action. The only difference is this one has a wooden stock and the bolt handle is different. Other than that, the action, the magazine, everything is the same. I'll go ahead and remove this bolt and show you what I'm talking about. I'll take the bolt out of the nylon here. The only difference is the bolt handle. You know, the bolt handles are different. There you can see both bolts are the same except for the handle. That's the rear of the bolt. Same locking system. Same firing pin. Everything's the same. The ejectors are the same, or the extractors, I should say. So, you know, Remington mass produced the hardware for these guns, and then they put different stocks on them and gave them different name designations. But basically, they're all the same. So, we'll go ahead and put this bolt back in here.
I just brought this one out here to make a comparison. I just love these old 22s. They're just so solid, you know, when you work them, everything feels just rock solid. I mean, when that locks up, it's locked. That will hold tons of pressure. And this is a good shooting rifle here as well. By the way, if you have an old bolt action like this, let me give you a little tip. If you've got it in the cock position, the chamber's empty, there's nothing in the magazine, and you want to let the bolt down, you don't want to dry fire it and risk damaging the firing pin. What you want to do is hold the bolt handle, pull the bolt handle up, hold it with your hand, and then squeeze the trigger and just ease it down. And that'll relax all of the tension from the firing pin onto the uh, receiver there. So now the gun is in the relaxed position. You can store it away. You don't have to worry about the firing pin becoming fatigued and the gun's safe. You know, it's unloaded. It can be safely stored that way, ready for use in the future. Well, guys, because I've got so many rifles to test, I brought my grandson out here to help me shoot some of these guns. We're going to be putting them to the test today, folks. And I've got a bunch of targets set up down here. But before I turn him loose with a 22, I want to test out a couple of these rifles on some targets myself to uh, see about the accuracy of them. First off, I want to try out this J.C. Higgins with open sights. And I've got a target put up down here at 35 yards. So I want to see whether or not there's any difference in the accuracy shooting it from semi-automatic mode to single shot mode. So let's give it a try. Okay, we'll zoom in on this target first of all. And I'm going to be shooting five shots into each one of those targets there. First off, to the left, this is using open sights, folks. Okay, the next five shots, I'm going to be locking the bolt here, and I'll be cycling them manually. That's a really small target to see with open sights at that distance. All right. Okay, guys, these are the two five shot groups that I just shot at 35 yards. Here, I think I was actually holding a little bit to the left. Like I said, that's using open sights, but still, you know, at 35 yards, that's not bad. That's in the semi automatic mode. And then when I lock the bolt, I got that group right there. One of them went a little bit high, and that was most likely my mistake, my sighting error. But look at that, that's four shots right there clustered together, the size of a dime. That's a good shooting rifle. The trigger's a little bit on the heavy side, but you know, you can get used to it. But with that kind of accuracy, that's pretty darn good. You know, for small games such as squirrels or rabbits, or even for pests such as rats, pigeons, crows, things like that, that's more than acceptable. Okay, since my friend Dave was kind enough to loan me this fine rifle, including the CBC Nylon 66 clone, I'm going to be doing some testing at 35 yards to see which type of ammunition this gun actually prefers. And I've got a variety of 22 target ammunition. First of all, I've got some of this Gemtech. This is no longer in production. 
but I'll be shooting five rounds of this at 35 yards to see how well it groups as compared to CCI standard velocity, Ely target, Ely club, and SK standard plus and SK semi-auto. So we're going to be shooting five shots each and I've got the target set up out here at 35 yards. So let's go check it out. Okay, we'll get zoomed in here and shoot the first five shot group, which will be in the upper left target using CCI standard velocity. Here we go. Right, that's five shots. Looks like one went just a little bit low, but the rest of them are all in there. Now, before I shoot the next five shot group, I'm gonna swab the barrel out using some cotton swabs here. Now, the next five shot group, I'll be using the Gemtech Silencer subsonic 22 long rifle And that'll be the target in the middle in the upper row Pretty good. I think that first shot was just pretty much a fouling shot and uh, the rest of them all clustered right in there around the bullseye after I fired that first shot. And that's probably a pattern that we'll see throughout this testing. Next we've got the Ely target and I'll be shooting five shots into that target on the far right upper row. So here we go. And well they're shooting a little bit high. Okay, last one for the Ely target. I like the trigger on this Remington Nylon 11. Nice trigger. All right, very good. Okay, next up we've got the Ely Club. And we'll be shooting at the target just under the one we just shot at, which would be the bottom row on the far right. This is Ely Club ammunition out of the Remington Nylon 11. That ammo there is shooting a little bit to the left and high. Seems to be. Yep. Looks like it's clustering 
right up there around 11.30. Making one ragged hole there. So far that CCI standard velocity is looking pretty good, folks, out of this rifle. Okay, we got that swabbed out. Next, we got the SK Standard Plus. Five rounds of that into the middle target of the bottom row. Okay, that was the SK Standard Plus. Okay, next up we've got the SK Semi-Auto. That's in the bottom row, first target on the far left. Popped a little bit louder than the other stuff. Same hole. Same hole. Same hole once again. Incredible. Okay, folks, this is the target I just shot using the Remington Nylon 11. The first five shot group was using CCI standard velocity. And I think that was the second shot, if not mistaken, may have been the third shot, I'm not really sure. But either way, all four subsequent shots there grouped right in there around the bullseye, which is pretty good. You know, that's good for that type of ammunition. And CCI standard velocity is a couple of dollars cheaper per box than all the rest of these. So that's a testimony to the quality of uh, CCI's ammunition. Now the Gemtech which is no longer in production. This is the box of it here. Can't find any more of this because they quit making it from what I understand. I believe that was the first shot. That's the way I marked it anyway. And then all four subsequent shots grouped right there, clustered right above the bullseye. That's at 36 yards actually. I said it was 35 but I checked it and it's 36 yards. Then the next group was using Ely Target. And I'm not sure if that was the first shot or not. I think it was. I believe that was the first shot. And then all four subsequent shots clustered into a tiny group there the size of a, a shirt button, pretty much. Just a little bit above the bullseye. Slightly to the left, but you know, either way you can see the accuracy potential of that ammunition. And then we step up to the Ely Club. That was the first shot. Strangely enough, it shot a little bit lower than all the rest. And then all four subsequent shots grouped right in there, slightly to the left and high. And that's this ammunition. Then the SK Standard Plus, which is very good ammunition in most of my rifles. That was the first shot. It shot off to the left quite a bit and then all the other shots were pretty much in line with the bullseye but slightly high. Still that's a good group. And then the best of all was using this SK Semi-Auto. That was the first shot slightly to the left once again and then all four subsequent shots went into a hole the size of an aspirin tablet right there. That's just incredible, folks. That's great ammunition. And that will show you just how accurate some of these old 22s can be. They're real tack drivers, you know. So after each five-shot group, 
I've swabbed the bore out using a cotton patch like this to get a fresh start. And in most cases, the first shot hit a little bit off from the rest of the group, as you can see here. You know, it either shot a little bit high or a little bit to one side or the other. But uh, I did that to try to give an honest assessment of what each type of ammunition would do in that particular rifle. Did I finally get to shoot? Yes, you finally get to shoot now. Alex is ready to try out my Nylon 66. I don't think he's ever shot this little rifle, but I know you're going to have fun. Mm -hmm. Before we shoot it though, let me show you. I've got 10 rounds loaded into the magazine here. It loads from the back of the stock. And this is just so neat. I showed this before, I think, but when you pull the bolt handle back, the cartridge almost jumps into the chamber and in some cases it does let me see if I can capture that there you see it I mean it jumped right in there the, the head of the bullet was already in the chamber how it does that is just amazing to me so let's have a little fun go ahead let me zoom in on those targets and uh, here, have a seat here and take a rest all right keep comfortable while Alex is getting comfortable, I'm going to zoom in on these targets down here. And then he can commence to shoot once I get zoomed in here. Okay, which one you want to go for first? The squirrel. Which squirrel? The one the on the one far left. left? You're going to do a head shot or a body shot? Head shot. Okay, let's see if you can hit the head on that squirrel. All right. Bunny. I think you hit a little bit low on that one. You're gonna shoot the bunny in the head? Yeah, you got him in yes. the head. Okay. And then the squirrel in the middle. Alright. That's three shots. Which one's next? The prairie dog? Yep. You smacked him a little bit low and to the left, but you still hit him. And I'm going to aim for that orange target. The big orange target? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you hit it. Hit one of them swinging targets there. Okay, you can clean that one off. Good shot. Man, he's showing me up. How many shells you got left? You got any left? Well, let's see. I think that's it. Now open the bolt. Open the bolt. Don't dry fire it. Just open it slightly. It's empty, ain't it? That empty. was the last one. Okay, we're going to reload. Let's go ahead and reload. I'm going to have to get a couple of bricks of that ammo. That's pretty good ammo. Just make sure you don't put it in there upside down because then we'll have a serious problem. <laughs> now you just push it all the way down and turn it. Now pull, it, pull her back and let her go. Try one of them cans there at the bottom. Well, you hit it and went right through it. Yep, smacked it. You got some off to the left there, or to the right there, right beside that prairie dog. That's three, I think. Yep. Smacked it. I hit that prairie dog again. Okay. He just won't go down, will he? Oh. I don't know what happened. Huh? Is that all of them? Let me check. Yep. All right. Well, son, what do you think of that little rifle? It's nice. A lot of fun, ain't it? Yep. All right. You think you'd take that squirrel hunting sometime? Probably. Okay, I got the rest of those CCI standard velocity loads loaded into that J.C. Higgins vintage 22 plastic stock rifle there. And my grandson's going to try and hit these targets down here at 50 yards with that rifle there. Open sights. Good 
shot. Take your time. Take your time with it. Good shot. Good shot. All right. Oh. Try, try that prairie dog there in the middle. Oh, you smacked him. That's it. All right. Open her up once. Make sure. Yep. All right. All right, Alex, what kind of ammunition we're fixing to try? What is that? Super. Super Two X? R. PowerPoint. Super X 22 PowerPoint made by Winchester. Winchester. Yep. Let's see Winchester. what one of those bullets looks like. Let's take a look at it. Get a close look at it here. Ooh, hollow point. Wicked. All right. Go ahead and load that nylon 66. Go ahead and load her up. We're going to blow up some water-filled cans. Time to have some more fun. Just because they're plastic 22s doesn't mean it can't be fun to shoot. <laughs> That'll be enough. Remember, push all the way down until it turn it as you push it down. Come on. You got to push down as you turn it. You feel it go in. There it goes. I think that's it. Yep. All right. Now let me get zoomed in on some of these targets. Which ones are you going to shoot at first? The closest ones? Yeah, the closest ones first. Sorry about that air conditioning unit clicking off and on, but we live in the south, so we got to keep the house cool. All right, go ahead. Remember, aim a little bit low. These are going to be louder than the others. Whoa! Okay. Those ones on the left now. See them peeking over the hill. All right. Oh, the shock wave from that one knocked the other one over. No, okay. Those ones downrange. Pew. Oh. Make sure you stay on it now. Whoa, that one exploded. Oh, man, is that all of them? Oh, you no. Hit, you hit the one at 100 yards. You smacked it. Yes, I did. Okay. Shoot the prairie dog with that high. There you go. Wow. Man, you... That's it. All right, Alex. Which one of these rifles would you really like to shoot next? Mm, I'd say this one right here. The Nylon 11? Yep. That's a pretty gun, isn't it? Yes. Okay. All right. I've got some Ely Target. And Alex put up another sticky target down there. So go ahead and load up some shells. We'll load up some of these Ely Targets here. There you go. It's an odd magazine now, design. Lay the rifle up here. We'll take care of Mr. Dave's rifle. Now go ahead and load those up. Yeah. 
That is a fine little 22. We'll see just how accurate it is. He's going to try and clean off that target on that prairie dog down there. And all he gets is five shots. All right. All you got to do is cycle the bolt all the way up. Now, let me get zoomed in on that target. Let's see if you can clean it off there. Yep, sure did. Did you put another one up somewhere? Yeah. Which on where? On the scroll in the middle. Oh, okay. Wow, perfect headshot. You shoot that bunny rabbit right in the heart. That bright orange target. Perfect shot. Man, that is a tap driving 22 right there. What else are you going to shoot at? That one squirrel is on the ground. Okay. Yep, you got him too. Next, which target? That can that survived. Now you just put a hole through it. Okay. That's an accurate 22, ain't it? Yep. Well, folks, that was a lot of fun with Alex shooting those 22s, but I've got a little story to tell you. Years ago, when I was a young man, my first shotgun was a 20-gauge single shot, and it was a New England firearms break open. I'm sure a lot of you know exactly what that is. And uh, we lost that gun in a house fire, just completely burned it up. And uh, I've been looking for another one, and I found one. So I went ahead and bought it, and I've given it to my grandson, and here he is with it. Show him what you got there. It's a New England Firearms 20 gauge. Go ahead and open it up. And what I really like about these old guns is they're very well made. That's color case hardened on the receiver. That's something you hardly see anymore on any type of gun. But I got the gun really cheap, and he just absolutely loves this gun. <laughs> And since we've got one can that survived down there, he said, can I shoot that one with my shotgun, Papa? I said, yes, absolutely. So he ran and got it. I'm going to zoom in on that can, and we're going to load up here. All right. Uh, keep the hammer up until you get ready to shoot. I'm trying to teach him safety, folks. All right. All right, get over here where we can see you now, over this way, over here. Okay, what are we shooting at? That can. No witnesses. I'd say you killed it. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. <laughs> now we patterned that little shotgun at 30 yards using some TSS shot. And it threw a pattern like that and completely covered a turkey's head. And uh, I'll tell you what, I think it'd make a really good little turkey gun for him. Well, guys, after shooting that video yesterday, I was on my way to work this morning. And I realized that I did not make a comparison between the original Remington Nylon 66 and this black CBC Nylon. So I thought I'd come home for lunch on my lunch hour and shoot this rifle and just do a quick comparison a side by side right here on the table which I can show you really quickly go ahead and remove this camera as you can see the lines are all virtually identical there's a little bit of difference here in the trigger the CBC trigger is actually made out of metal and the nylon is made out of the polymer. So there's the difference right away that I can see. Um, of course, the color is different. This one's black, and this one is the Mohawk Brown. This has a white diamond, just like the nylon. 
the barrel here of course is marked Remington and this one here is marked CBC and these were imported from Brazil as you can see right here by FIE Miami Florida I think you can see that if I can get the reflection just right and uh, virtually the guns are the same as far as I can tell they have the same length barrel they both weigh about four pounds um, the checkering is a little different here you can see the Remington has a finer checkering pattern than the CBC does the Remington nylon of course has the nylon symbol there on the bottom of the grip cap and the CBC does not the loading port is the same on the rear you have this tubular magazine that comes out just like on the nylon a tubular magazine so like I say you know virtually they're the same gun although the original nylons do have a higher value as far as collector value goes but these guns have gone up in price too um, I don't know how much they are to be sure but I do know that the original Remington nylons are several hundred dollars you know if they're in pretty good shape like this one here depending on the condition you know you have to make your own judgment whenever you are in the market for one there is a grooved receiver on the original nylon and there is also on the CBC rifle so you can mount a scope on these as well the rear sights are pretty much the same this one has a smaller screw right here for the windage that one there is a little bit larger but other than that it's pretty much the same and I would say they take down the same also but I'm gonna load this little rifle up and uh, take a few shots down here at 50 yards like I promised and I'll have to inject this part of the video into the original video so let me go ahead and do a little shooting here okay one thing I just noticed my original Remington nylon 66 will hold 14 rounds this one holds 13 that's full capacity of 22 long rifle ammo so let's take a few shots down here and see how well the gun cycles and whether or not I can hit these targets now let's get zoomed in here and we'll take a few shots here Try for that squirrel on the left. Okay, had one malfunction there. Let's go for that little prairie dog there. That's a miss. Okay, I see a target just to the right next to that prairie dog. Sure where I'm hitting there. 
Let's try that swinging target on the left. Okay, got that one. And I see one target just down below that swinging target. And that's it. So I had one misfire, and there you can see there was a dent put into the primer there. I don't know if it's the shell, but uh, that particular round did not go off. It fed into the gun, it just didn't fire. But whether or not that's the fault of the gun or the shell, I believe it's the shell. Even though it's a CCI, these are standard velocity CCIs, so I don't know. But anyway, that's a quick comparison between the original Nylon 66 and the Brazilian-made CBC Nylon clone. Whether or not you want to buy one that's a copy of the original Nylon, that's entirely up to you. But I wanted to make a quick comparison just so that you could see. Well guys, I hope you all enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it because I literally had an absolute blast. And to get my grandson out here and watch him have as much fun as he did shooting these old classic 22s, I'll tell you what, it did my heart a lot of good. And, you know, he was using a rest there, but I think you can all agree with me, he's a pretty good shot. You know, he was able to get those crosshairs on those targets fairly quickly and squeeze off some really good shots. But more than anything, he always overemphasizes gun safety. And that's something that I've instilled in him from the very first time I brought him out here, you know. And I think as parents and grandparents, it's our responsibility, if we are gun owners, to instill gun safety to our children or anyone else that's around. You know, you always wanna overemphasize safety whenever you get the chance, and that's what we do. Well, with that being said, let me also mention that it's an absolute honor to be able to feature some of these classic old 22s in this video, like this Remington Nylon 11. This one here is like brand new, folks, and it's a rare opportunity to be able to show a gun like this. There's not many of these around. You don't see these every day, and they were only made for a few years, I think from 1962 to 64, which is the year that I was born. And uh, they also made another nylon, it was a lever action, the only lever action that Remington ever produced, it was the Model 76. But it had a nylon stock like this. Uh, there was the Remington Nylon 10, which was a single shot bolt action, just like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. And then there was this Nylon 11, which is a bolt action repeater with this magazine clip just like the Remington Model 511 and then there was the Remington Nylon 12 which had a tubular magazine just like the Remington Model 512 so you know the actions were the same pretty much but the stock design was different but what an absolute joy to bring this to you and to be able to get the chance to shoot it out here. If I ever run across one of these for sale, I'll try to get my hands on it, folks, because I really like it. And, you know, like I say, the, the chances and the opportunities are quite rare. The same goes for this old J.C. Higgins semi-auto 22. You know, you don't see these every day either. This is a thing of the past. I think they made the last ones of these in 1962, folks. So, you know, these are old guns, but like I showed you, I was shooting open sights with this gun, and it was grouping them right in there, you know, I mean, right close together. And a lot of those bullet holes were touching each other down there at 35 yards, which is really good. So there's no telling how accurate this old rifle really is. You know, if you had a scope on here, you could tell more about the accuracy, but I guarantee you this is another tack driver right here. 
And if you ever run across one of these, don't let the plastic stock fool you because, you know, the plastic stock 22s were the pioneers of modern plastic molded stocks. They were ahead of their time so many years ago. And as you can see from this video, the quality was definitely not lacking in these old guns. And that's why I was so proud to be able to get this nylon 66. I wanted an original nylon, uh, and that's what I got here. And there's a story that goes with this old nylon here. I shared it with you in the video where I featured this old gun. I was 15 years old, and I went up to my dad, and I asked him, I said, you know, I think I'd like to have a 22 rifle. And he said, well, that's perfectly fine, son. You're old enough, you know, but you're going to have to earn it. That means you got to get a job. So I got me a job washing dishes. I ran a dishwasher conveyor for a couple of weeks until I earned the money. And uh, I got enough money, more than enough actually, to buy my first 22. And this was what the guy behind the counter handed me, a nylon 66. And I said, man, I don't want this thing. And he said, why not? I said, it's plastic. It's a piece of junk. I don't want this. I want something made out of wood and steel, so I chose a Remington Model 581, and I still have it to this day. But I recently just had an appeal for these old nylons, and I picked this one up, and I'm glad I did, because it's a good shooting gun, and it's just a real nice addition to my collection. So if you run across some, you know, some of these old nylon Remingtons, or like this old J.C. Higgins, Savage Model 101. I would recommend it if you're looking for a good 22, but be prepared to pay some big prices, especially for the nylons, because the collector value has really gone up on those lately. But you know, you get what you pay for. And the old guns like that, the quality is way up there, especially compared to today's standards. So with that being said, let me go ahead and close out this video and say thanks for watching. I really appreciate you coming along. And until next time, remember, if you like to go hunting, fishing, camping, shooting, hiking, whatever your outdoor activity happens to be, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. But also remember, hit that like button, smash the bell icon, and subscribe. That way you'll know when more videos like this one will be coming your way. So until then, remember, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and God bless. I'll be seeing you.